I want you guys to be able to do this, but I also know that you won't have to on the exam. We did the parts you're going to have to do. We did the, the, the rod or a loop, something very one-dimensional. Or you might have to do some kind of um, composite object, all of which you need to know how to do. But there is a certain, there's a certain part of me that makes me want you to be good at this because it's so different than any other kind of math you've ever done. And especially you guys who are all those mathletes out there. Uh, I love the whole Mu Alpha Theta thing. I love the idea that you're competitive, but I often feel like the problems are not rooted in reality. They're rooted in math for the sake of arguing math, which I, I get. I understand that, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the relationship of numbers. But the fact that this is something that's hard, that a mathlete should study because it's rooted in reality, means more to me. And I think the other day we were trying to talk about just where like area came from. Because that's what we did first, right? We showed pi r squared comes from the area, <laughs> that you can integrate that area. And I looked around the room and I'm, I'm seeing just a lot of, well, whatever, I don't care. Probably because, well, it's hard. I want to talk about this example and I want to do so, even if it's hard, with the hope that you could impress me by doing this yourself. And I'll give you something that you can do that's within your purview that would be impressive. And I've already produced the solution and I'll post it. It won't impress me that you can read my solution. It'll impress me if you can do it on your own. Now, I don't need to be, you don't need to impress me. I already find all of you to be nice, capable, wonderful people. But, you know, if you want to try something hard and fail spectacularly, great. Because at least you tried. And, but if you want to try something hard and, and be successful, I'll be impressed. You won't get any points or extra credit or anything like that. I don't want you to do it for that reason. The disk is hard because you've never done math like this before. You have to take something and find a way to break it up into pieces and then use your math skills to put it back together again. That's really what's happening here. And I'll talk you through the process because we've already done a couple of these. We did the bar, and then we did the hoop. But here's where math gets a little bit great. So we're going to break this up into pieces. I'm going to say that this is a piece of the object. This is how finding the moment of inertia works. It's actually finding out any moment works in this process. Anytime you need to add up the contribution of a geometry works like this. So line integrals, area integrals, volume integrals are going to be like this. Now, to find a moment of inertia, I'll remind you that we are going to add up every piece of mass and then multiply by how far that piece is from the axis of rotation and square it. It's a sum. So this box is my piece of mass. It has mass dm. Somebody in the other class asked, why is it d? Simple. It really means delta. It's a piece. We use D because I have to integrate, so I need to have an integrand. So that's why D is going to be used here to remind me that I need to be able to use this in a mathematical process later. The integral is a mathematical computation. It does the area for us. That's why you're learning all those rules. Because when you're done, it just, just takes the area, just adds the crap, I mean, the stuff up. Well, that's, not, that's in the recording forever now. So the first thing I have to recognize is I need some geometry to point to where that is. And I know that's weird sounding, but it's, it shouldn't be all that weird sounding. Meaning I'm going to arbitrarily choose some direction, and that's zero. Zero degrees right there. Or in this case, zero pi. Or zero radians. There's zero radians, zero pi. Get a little punchy. So to point to this thing, I'm going to consider that to get there, I'm going to have to start at zero and move over, you know, some angle. And then 
I'm going to have to move outwards some amount r. That's how I point to that mass. So that mathematically I can tell you where that piece of mass is. Go over some angle and out some distance. Now, I want to define dm in terms of how I point to it. Now, I can't do that because I don't, I don't have a way of describing mass by pointing at something. I do have a way of defining mass based on the size of something. I could multiply the density times the size. That gives me a way of telling somebody how much mass is there. To do that, I need a, a density I can work with. And the density I will work with here is going to be the mass per unit area. I'm making that up right now based on the size of this object. I'm going to say it has a radius, capital R. And because it's circular, its area is pi r squared. So its area is m over pi r squared. Never going to get this done. Ever. Now, look, this next little piece, you have to hear it in the moment. If I want to describe how big this piece is, I can do so with the pointers, meaning I know that this is an area, so I can multiply that size by this size, and that would give me the area. So how do I describe it with the pointers that I have? Well, if I go out a distance r, I just need to go out a little further. That's what this is. This is dr. Now, if I want to get this other length over here, one of these, I want to stay at r, but kind of scooch over d theta. That's why this will be r d theta. So now my size is going to be side A, dr, and side B, r d theta. It's an area. I've defined the area based on my pointers. All right, now you can go. Actually, you could have gone before. I don't know if I'm allowed to hold you anymore. This is high school. Okay, so now that we have pointed directly to our piece of mass and now that we have found a way to express the size of that piece of mass in terms of our pointer, we can now assemble our integral because our integral asks for us to be able to determine where each item is and how far away from the axis of rotation each item is. So the first part is not just where, I'm sorry. It wants to determine how big each item is. That's the dm. And how far away from the axis of rotation each item is. That's r squared. So this whole part represents the mass of a piece of our disk, written in such a way as for me to be able to tell you that it is dr wide, r d theta uh, long, and sigma is the, um, is the density. And then I have to multiply that by r squared. Now, unfortunately, I can't leave my integral like this because it really is being expressed wrong. There are two derivatives in this, so I need to create a sum for both. Now, in some cases, and those cases vary from expression to expression, where I am might affect how big or how heavy the item is. Meaning it's possible that the density could be dependent on R. Of course, it's also possible that my object might have limits. Like, for example, what if my object wasn't round? What if it had like a shape like, like that? So some R's could go from zero to here, but some R's could go from zero to here. You know, something like, as a cartoid shape like that is. So it's, it's possible to have situations where R and theta 
would be related, where the limits of R would be related to the limits of theta. But this one isn't like that. For every single point on this disk, we have to start from the center and go to the outside edge, and we have to do that all the way around the disk, which ultimately means that our two derivatives aren't related. The dr has to go from zero to capital R, has to go from the inside to the outside for every theta. And then theta has to go from zero to two pi to make sure we accommodate the entire disk. So since R is not related to theta, and since sigma is constant everywhere, this can be separated out into two separate derivatives. One that collects all the R's, and there are three of them. And one that collects all the thetas, and there are none of them. They each have separate, uh, separate limits, and they can actually be integrated separately, which is what I'm going to do. Um, R cubed dr integrated from 0 to r is going to give me an integrand of 1 fourth r to the fourth evaluated from zero to capital R. And since it's just d theta, it's assumed that that's one d theta and the integral of one with respect to theta is theta evaluated from zero to two pi. Now this, when I put in my limits, is gonna be sigma times one quarter capital R to the fourth times two pi. However, I can simplify that. Oh, so just think for a moment. Let me collect and I get one half pi r to the fourth, right? I'm sigma, that's i. But sigma, if you'll recall, is m over pi r squared. So, this pi r squared is going to cancel with two of them and the pi, leave me with one half m r squared. C, not so terrible. And it's what we expect, it's a disk. Now, look, this one's hard, but they're not impossible. And having seen it once does make it easier, but does not make it easy. I want you to think of trying this one. And again, it's not going to be easy, but I think it's doable. Imagine a ring, but instead of spinning it about its center like we've done before, I want you to spin it about its center through this axis. So imagine a diameter that cuts it and we spin it this way. So it's like spinning a ring on the, on the table. Now, this one can be done using all the same things we talked about. I will help a little bit to get you started. First, let's consider that dm is right there. And let's also put together what we know. This has linear density that's equal to the entire mass divided by two pi, and let's use capital R as our radius. Again, I'm not thinking of this as a thick ring. I'm thinking of this as just a ring. If you want an easy thing to work out, work out the thick ring problem. It's exactly the same as the disk, but you're gonna change your limits for R. But for this ring, I still want to define dm, its location, as being located somewhere towards the center to here. A, perhaps it's located theta away from the edge. And since we're assuming it's a thin ring, then all we have to worry about is what this length is, ds. And we covered that with the ring I want you to figure that out on your own. I think you can. Here's the hard part. This piece is that distance r from the axis of rotation. 
which means you have to find a way to express our sum so that r is expressed in terms of the variables that we're using to point at dm. We're not pointing at dm with little r. We're pointing at dm with big R and theta. Give it a shot. I will upload a PDF with the answer. Not just the answer. I'll upload a PDF with the solution. The answer, believe it or not, is 1 half m r squared, just like a disk, even though it's a ring. Give it a try.